Good afternoon. I'm Allison Dunn. I'm the owner of Deliberate Directions, your business coach. And this afternoon, we have Monica Jensen with us. She is the copywriter, strategist, and owner of Jensen Communications. Her company has worked with Groupon, Web.com, Bazuto. Is that how you say that? Bizzuto? Yeah, Bizzuto. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, as well as many other small businesses. Monica, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks so much for having me, Allison. I've been looking forward to this. I have been as well. So um, I'm super curious about um, what you do on a daily basis. And so we're going to kind of dive into the idea of like, what's a copywriter and what do they do? So how did you even get into copywriting to begin with? Um, that is an awesome question. I was like a lot of 20 somethings where I kind of meandered in my yeah. career. I knew I, I majored in marketing. I knew I wanted to be in marketing, but it took a little while for me to find mm -hmm. in, in the marketing world. It's a long story. I'm not going to tell it, but when my, um, when my son was a year and a half and my daughter was in kindergarten, I was like, okay, I need to do more than work really, really part-time for a nonprofit <laughs> as their editor. Um, so I launched my own copywriting okay. shop and that grew into a small content marketing agency. So there's currently six of us. Um, and copywriting is at the core, obviously of every single mm -hmm. thing that that we do, um, but we also do a ton of you know marketing stuff, right? We don't just sit and write. There's a lot of marketing strategy behind what we do. I'm sure, and that's kind of what I'm hoping we can pick your brain on a little bit today because copywriting is only so good. It's what you do with it after you write it, right? Exactly, so. yes. All right, so I've got a quote from you um, here. Okay. Um, you said, I'm a huge believer in writing content that is entirely customer-centric. It directly speaks to the customer's needs and the challenges, focuses on the benefits they'll get, and its relevant, useful helpfulness. So what is the process around creating customer-centric content? Um, my favorite topic, so mm -hmm. I'm so glad this is the first question mm -hmm. we're starting with. Um, l let me just back up a bit before I answer that question. Now, it's sure. very natural for us um, I, and we're just wired as humans to do this, mm -hmm. is to talk about ourselves. We are our own favorite subject. So if you've ever read, <laughs> if you've ever read Dale Carnegie's classic, How to Win Friends and Influence mm -hmm. People, one of his tips is ask people about themselves. Just keep asking questions, keep listening to them, and they are gonna walk away thinking they just had the best conversation in the world so because true. they just <laughs> talked about themselves mm -hmm. for you know, 30 minutes or, or whatever. So, you know, my point is we want to talk about ourselves. You know, we want to share what we do. We're excited about that. But if you think about your customer or your client, they don't really care about you and what you do. They want to know what you are going to do for them. Okay. So once that is established, yes, they'll get to know and love you as they, as they work with you. And then they will truly care about you. But right at the beginning, they really do not care about you. They care about themselves, how you are going to help them. And a lot of companies get this wrong. Mm -hmm. They go right out of the gate talking about, we do this, we do that, here are our clients, here's our process. No, 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 no. you always start by thinking, what do, what, no, what are your clients' biggest challenges? What are their biggest pain points? What do you do to help them? What are the benefits of working with you? And so you write all of your copy, you turn it around. So instead of just completely talking about yourself, you're now talking to your audience. You're not talking at them. Mm -hmm. So do you have some um, techniques on how to do that? Oh, gosh, that's hard. That's It's kind of abstract to explain yeah. it. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I would think about, you know, you're, you're schooled with, um, you know, an elevator pitch. And in your elevator pitch, you really want to talk about your value proposition. So I'd really say that that's the best place to start is with your value proposition. What value are you providing? Because okay. you automatically are going to stop talking about me, 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 and start talking about you, you and me, mm -hmm. and how you can work together, let's say. Okay. Um, so I, I would start if, you know, if you're talking to someone at a, um, at a cocktail party, 
oh, what do you do? Well, it's really boring to say, I'm, I'm an accountant, right? They might turn around and walk away. They're like, oh, I'm not gonna have a conversation with this person. But if you instead frame it and say, I help, uh, and I'm stealing this from my accountant, this is, her, this is her tagline or her value proposition. She would say to you, I help my clients live the best life um, with the money that they have. Okay. Oh, that's cool. How do you do that? That's, now that is interesting, right? Yep. You wanna have a conversation about Way that. Way more interesting than saying you're an accountant. Exactly. <laughs> For sure, that's great. Okay, so that's a, that is a good example of how you turn it around so that someone could say, like, so tell me more, right? They're interested exactly. now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so you've created this cu customer centric content, and mm -hmm. and you formulated it in some type of great writing piece. What is it that you do next? How do you attract the right audience to it? What tips do you have for that? Okay, great. So you know this this analogy is used all the time. Um, from the movie Field of Dreams, build it and they will come. This is only applicable to that movie. <laughs> I was like, it's not this true. Not I thought you were tell me I've just been world. doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so in in the business world, you can't just build it and they and, and expect people to show up. You're, you're it's, it's like a, a, a tree falling in the forest. If no one is there to hear it fall, does anyone hear it? So you write this beautiful article, um, you know, in which you share like some of your top, you know, secrets or you know, people stuff that people outside of the industry don't really know or talk about. Got this beautiful piece of writing. You're excited to share it. Well, you don't just put it up on your website. You have to push it out to people, right? Mm -hmm. You have to get it out through email, through an okay. email newsletter. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, email, I hate email, my inbox is overwhelmed. Well, email marketing has an ROI of 4,400%. And that number has not changed in years. 4, yes, we're inundated with email. 4,400%, 4,400%. This okay. number hasn't changed in years, in hmm. years. So you think about your own inbox, okay? The promotional emails that you get, um, a lot of them you ignore. But I bet there's a couple of companies who send out really high quality stuff mm -hmm. and you see it land in your inbox and oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this aside, I'm gonna read it during lunch or you know when I just need a brain break from work right. and you actually do read it, okay? So yes, email marketing does work. Then the other thing obviously is social media, social media marketing. Um, one of the biggest misconceptions of social media marketing is you have to be an expert in every single channel. Uh, you have to be using every channel. Oh my God, I need to be on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. And am I supposed to be on Pinterest too? I don't know. And, and what about uh, Snapchat? And people just get overwhelmed very quickly and run away. Mm -hmm. Well, you only need to be on the channels where your audience is. Okay. Doesn't matter what channels you like to use mm -hmm. or what channels you think your audience likes to use or which channels you're most comfortable with using. You have to be on the channels that they use. So if we think about, um, you know, if you're a B2B company, um, like I am, like you are, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Your audience is absolutely gonna be on LinkedIn. They go there for business related information. Uh, for most B2C companies, you want to consider Facebook um, and Instagram. Twitter can be great for both. But again, it depends on where your audience is. Have you found um, or can you allude to the secrets that you use so that I agree, LinkedIn, I'm B2B mostly, and um, that is the channel in which I get the most engagement. Is yep. there... Um, is there best practices of how long some th something should be when you're posting it on LinkedIn? I mean, any tips that you could give to my B2B clients that would be looking for that guidance from a professional copywriter? Yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, you know, there's two ways to share information on LinkedIn. You can publish an article mm -hmm. or you can um, share a post. Okay. Um, in terms of, let's start with, with the latter, with, with the post. I mean, gen, you're gonna have a beautiful graphic, whether it's a photo you took um, or um, a photo you downloaded from a, a stock photo site or a graphic that you create on Canva. Canva is 
you know, a secret weapon for every marketer. Agreed. Out. And we love it. So, so easy to yeah. use. Yeah, it takes a little while to get going, but once you get it, you get it. Yeah. Um, so definitely start with an image and then, you know, you it's, it's kind of like Facebook, right? You only get so much room for your for your text. So mm -hmm. definitely keep it short. The image, the graphic should be telling the bulk of the story. What's interesting is I find right. people- Not everyone is gonna click on that read more button. Right. Is there a value to having a read more button there though? I And I may have, have yeah, the myth- absolutely. Be yeah, because if people like what you're talking about, they, they're gonna wanna continue right. to, you know, to read and, and get to the rest of your thought. Um, how many clients do you do you work with on a on a regular basis? Like typically? Oh my gosh. Um, let's see. I'd say right now we've got like maybe fifteen clients. Okay. We typically we well we have in the past worked with anywhere between like fifteen and thirty clients a month, mm -hmm. which is a, a lot. Okay. Um, and it's changing now we've got fewer and bigger clients and before we had smaller <laughs> clients yes yeah all right so what is the typical size client you're working with and i don't know if client size is like revenue for you like how do you how do you equate yeah size? it's typically it's typically revenue, revenue okay um because we we need to we need our, our ideal clients have a marketing budget Right. Of course. And yeah. Okay. yeah. And so that's generally based on revenue. I mean, you can be a solopreneur making five million dollars mm -hmm. or ten million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Right. So we don't like to limit based on the number of employees. Okay. Um, it, it's definitely revenue. Um, I can't remember the exact percentage, but there is a percentage out there. I think it's around 20 percent of your annual revenue should be spent on marketing. That's um, the number that you use. I like that number. That's a good number. Down somewhere, yeah. I need to. I need to find it. I can send it to you. Um, it's it's from a, actually an operations consultant that I've worked okay. with. Okay, that's funny. Past. I usually yeah. say um, it should be no less than eight percent. Yes. And that if you're in a growing company, it could be double that. So twenty is yeah certainly double. So twenty would be double. Yeah. Twenty would yeah, yeah would for be high growth. would be double that. Yeah. So, but we, you know, we don't expect companies to spend all of their marketing budget with us and they shouldn't right. be because we're one part mm -hmm. of the marketing puzzle. They might want to do influencer marketing. They want, might want to do experiential, you know, in-person marketing or events. So there's right. got to be enough, you know, we, we can't do everything <laughs> and we don't do everything. Right. So there's got to be enough to go around. So in the area that you help clients, um, and obviously being clients that have a, a healthy marketing budget of some sort um, to hire a copywriter, what is the biggest challenge um, that you see over and over again in the companies you're working with? From either a content, social media, you know, regardless of what platform. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's actually, it's, there's three challenges okay. um, that, that the vast majority of our clients suffer from to usually three time okay i've heard that one before <laughs> yep content marketing requires a okay. lot a lot of time mm -hmm. um you have to be continually creating new stuff and getting it out there right mm -hmm. so it's not just like we talked about before it's not just writing it is making sure that you are sending it out in your monthly newsletter, mm -hmm. which means you're setting aside time to create your monthly newsletter and to write it and to do the layout and add, add, add images and uh, write to subject lines because you always want to A-B test subject lines whenever you send out a newsletter. Um, um, and then with, with social media, you are planning your posts. You are planning your images. They might be different from um, the image you used in your blog mm -hmm. post. You might want to pull out a quote and create a quote on Canva and get it out there. But social media is social. It's not a bullhorn. So you right. also need to spend time on social media interacting with people, liking stuff, commenting on stuff, sharing stuff. So yes, content marketing is <laughs> very, very time consuming, right? So that is one of the biggest challenges, or that is the biggest challenge our clients face. The second biggest challenge is actually writing. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people 
brilliant, 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 brilliant. I mean, they know their stuff. They know their industry. Um, they are incredible at what they do, but they hate writing. They hate it. They would, they would, they would rather, you know, do all their bookkeeping <laughs> than, than write a blog post. Um, and then the third biggest challenge is just marketing knowledge. You know, it's always okay. changing. Um, it, it's very confusing and people just get overwhelmed. What should I even be doing? I, I don't even have a strategy in place. I don't know what to start with, what I don't need to focus on, what I can only spend some time on, you know, what channel should I be on? So it, it's a combination of those three things that we see. We have these conversations a lot. Um, from um, just out of curiosity, so uh, the, kind of my next question was, what advice would you give to help someone to kind of managing those three major challenges? So mm -hmm. one is um, hire someone to help you write your content, potentially, if yes. you're not the yeah, person absolutely. who has the time to don't, write it. If, if you hate doing it, don't torture yourself. There's literally no reason to okay. do that. Someone will do it. A professional copywriter will do it better and faster than you. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've heard clients say, oh my God, I spent five hours on this blog post and it's like 600 words. And I'm like, I could have written that in like 45 minutes. And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, absolutely outsource that. But if yeah. you do enjoy writing and you just never have time for it, well, this comes, this comes down to productivity and time management, right? right? If you're gonna block out time on your calendar, I do this, I block out time every week uh, for writing and for marketing stuff. That time is sacred. I do not move it. If, I had, if that is my only free time on my calendar for the whole week and a new client wants to talk then, nope, we push off to the next week. Like you really have to honor that time and not give it over to something else because once you start doing that then you're gonna keep on you'll, you'll just you'll, you'll repeat the pattern and you'll keep pushing it keep okay. pushing it off i love um, i love the fact that you're saying honor the time i think that that is um one of the biggest challenges that even just as a business owner like you're trying to do all the things so if you have time yeah. set aside for that to make sure it yeah. sticks just so, honor and i know excellent advice like for me i set aside time every week um, some people, it just depends on how you work. I know some people prefer to set aside a huge block of time once a month. Okay. All right. So they might set aside three or four hours or, or whatever, or an entire day um, to create content. That actually is exhausting for me. And I'm a professional. <laughs> like I cannot write all day. Like I get tired. <laughs> right. So I like to, I like to break it up. Um, and then, you know, the, the other challenge in terms of marketing knowledge, I mean, that's just all about reading. I mean, just mm -hmm. do the best you can. None of us are perfect. None of us do marketing perfectly. None of us can keep on top of everything. So yeah, cut yourself a little slack. There you go. That's also excellent advice. Um, one, of, um, one of the things that I hear um, a lot of um, at least local uh, companies talking about is how did, how did the strategy behind launching a campaign or launching a product or launching a program. And um, I would love any um, insider perspective that you have on how to do it effectively and how not to do it, maybe by having done it wrong, if you could share. Because <laughs> we're learning, oh, yeah. right? I've made every mistake in the book. Okay. Well, let, let's start with how to do it effectively. I mean, any new campaign, any new program starts with listening. Mm -hmm. You need to listen to make sure there is a need for whatever this new thing is that you okay. want to put out into the world. Okay. Um, so listen for the need and then start listening for more specifics. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of a really good example. Um, okay, you know, I just took a sip of water. So let's say you have like some new water filter, okay, okay. that you're putting out into the market. Um, you listen to know that, that your specific filter, no one else does what you're doing, okay? It's not like a Brita filter, it's, 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 a, it's a portable filter, you can take it where, you know, wherever you wanna go. Well, people aren't always on the move. So is there another filter that's larger that people can keep on their um, kitchen counter 
or that can stay in the break room of an office? Like, are, are there other needs that are also important and maybe they're more important than the one that you've identified? Okay. All right. Um, so listen, 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 and then start jumping even before you go to market start jumping into those conversations online and offering your advice or, um, or your thoughts. Start, become a part of the conversation ahead of time if you can. How? How do you find opportunities to do that? Or what would you suggest? Let's use keywords. the water example. Hmm? Keywords. Keywords. Look up okay. keywords. Great. So, All right. So look for hashtags. So let's say Exactly. Hashtag. Okay. So let's say you're on Instagram, mm -hmm. right? With your, you're looking, poking around on Instagram with your, with your water filter. I mean, start punching in every single hashtag you can think of. Okay. See what people are saying around those hashtags. You'll find the hashtags that are most relevant for you, which are also going to be keywords that you're going to want to include in the content that you create. Right. Um, and, and look to see what people are saying and respond to them. Follow them on Instagram. Um, you know, Instagram and Twitter are very quid pro quo, right? You follow someone, they tend to follow you back. Mm -hmm. Not always, but generally speaking. Um, it's not always like that on LinkedIn or Facebook. Yeah, so follow them, follow them back and just start commenting. Um, maybe look to see what who the other people are who are commenting on okay. a post and maybe you can follow them. Um, again, you know, you you have to spend a lot of time on social media if you want it to work for you. But this is, it's so important to do this, to do this work um, at the beginning, instead of just pushing it out there, hoping for the best and realizing you're going about it all wrong. And then you have to backpedal. You've wasted all this time and money. Okay, that's, that's fair. So Monica, what is your favorite uh, keyword search tool? Buzzsumo. Buzz, can you spell that Buzz. for us? Yeah, B-U-Z-Z, -Z. Mm -hmm. Sumo, S-U-M-O. Thank you. So when I have writer's block, which I do get mm -hmm. um, every once in a while, um, I will go on to BuzzSumo and just start punching in marketing related keywords to see what people are writing about. Oh, good. That's brilliant. I love that. Yeah. How many keywords or hashtags should one use in a social media post? So for Twitter, no more than two, otherwise it looks spammy. Okay. Um, and Facebook doesn't really use mm -hmm. hashtags that much. I mean, you can throw one in, okay. um, but content isn't really, you know, sorted around hashtags. It's sorted mm -hmm. around affiliations, friendships. Um, Instagram, you can use as many as you want. Okay. Any rule of thumb on that one? I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do more than like 10. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't do more than 10 or 15. Okay. I think that that's seems like a lot. I usually do enough. two, yeah. <laughs> but maybe two is yeah. not enough. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what, if, but you know what, if two works for you and your brand, mm -hmm. then great, you right. know, you're not going to know until you try and until you start experimenting. For sure. Okay, so permission to experiment. That's another good yes. tip. That's all marketing is, ex experimenting. Um, just out of curiosity, are you also the content um, distributor? So you write the content, are you also the one who pushes it onto, onto platforms for your clients as a service? Yes. Excellent. Yes. What tool are you using? If you <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so for for email marketing, we use Mailchimp. Okay, great. Um so a couple of our clients use Constant Contact. Honestly, mm -hmm. there there's not a huge difference between mm -hmm. email marketing platforms. Um they all have a free version. Mm -hmm. Um they all have similar features. I think the the difference comes when you're want to start pay, paying for features, mm -hmm. um, th those features, the paid features might be different. But I think only one of our clients pays for MailChimp. He's got a huge list of like over 5,500. Um, okay. Well, no, wait, that's just one list. He probably has like seven or 8,000 total names. Okay. So he has to pay for it. Okay, okay so MailChimp for email marketing. For um, social media marketing, um, the dashboard we like the best is Hootsuite. Okay, which is what we use as well. But Buffer, yep, Buffer is also fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm partial to Hootsuite. I've been using it for a long time. Okay, fantastic. And um, for, um, 
for newsletters, you're just going through your regular CRM. There's nothing else outside of that for a platform, correct? Correct. Okay. I will, I will um, share this one tip, though, for email marketing. You know, you do have the option of sending a plain text emails. Mm -hmm. We only use plain text when we're doing an automated lead generation um, campaign. Um, because those emails look more personal. It doesn't look like this big marketing thing coming at you. Okay. It's a lot more personal. Um, so I, I, I always, I mean, some people try to get, <laughs> to get around it and be like, oh, well, I'm just going to send from my email. No, 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 no. Do not send from your email. <laughs> um, use, uh, use an email marketing platform and choose their plain text feature. Okay. Can I ask you a couple of questions specifically regarding that? So plain text, yes. meaning there's yeah. no visuals, there's no flashy um, elements to it. It looks like a personal email from to you. Yes, when except you, you can unsubscribe from it. <laughs> except you can unsubscribe, which is an important feature to have. Yes. Um, when do you not use plain text? When is it okay and needed to be more visually pleasing? Ever? Uh, definitely, yes, for, for, your, for your, any newsletter. If you do a weekly newsletter, if you would do a monthly newsletter. Okay. People expect there to be visuals and colors and a nice layout, um, okay. buttons, you know, for call to actions. Um, so I, it's worth taking the time to create a really beautiful template that's, um, that looks like your brand. Okay. So brand appropriate for newsletters, but email campaigns that are more lead generating, plain text. Plain text. Okay, good. Plain Thanks text. for that guidance. And you can, you can add links in the plain text, right. but you can't add right. you know, fancy buttons or anything. Okay, good, because it looks like promotion. Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, what are the five types of social media posts that are useful to customers? Ooh, okay, so this... Or top five. I'm not gonna say it depends because okay. even though <laughs> it that, is, that is the end, it depends on what your goals are. Okay. It depends on your industry. It depends on what your clients um, um, want to hear from you. But I would say there's, uh, gosh, there's so many, there's so many options here. Um, let's start with the what I, we call consumable posts. Okay. So I mentioned this earlier, like a little quote in Canva mm -hmm. or a, you know, a question of the week um, in Canva, something that people will consume in a, in a couple of seconds, okay. like move on, mm -hmm. right? You're staying in front of them, they're engaging with you, but you're not asking a lot, of, a, a lot from them. You're not asking for a lot of time, for a lot of thought. It's just like a little treat, a little okay. piece of candy, and they move on. All right. Um, and this is good on LinkedIn, too. I mean, this is not, I'm not just talking about like Facebook or Instagram. Mm -hmm. This works on LinkedIn, too. Mm -hmm. um, I shared a post today on LinkedIn. Um, it was just a quote, probably created in Canva. Um, and it said, um, if you think hiring a professional is expensive, just wait until you hire a an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> and I shared it from someone else, yeah. and then I've already seen two other people have shared it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it takes <laughs> a couple advice. seconds to read it. Mm -hmm. It's shareable. It's quick to consume. It's very shareable. All right. Uh, video. Okay. Video posts. Video is, I mean, we all know it's huge. And I know so many people who are wonderful, wonderful in person. They're so personable. They will take, I mean, they'll take selfies all day long, but you put a video camera in front of them and they're like, <laughs> deer in headlights. Um, I would absolutely create short videos, like with a quick tip or, oh my gosh, I had this conversation with someone today and I really wanted to share it with you because this is a problem that so many of our clients run into and here's the advice that they get. You know, it doesn't have to be, I mean, look, I'm in my home office. I don't have a fancy background. It, you don't, it doesn't have to be a slick production. Right. You know, just record something real quick, get it out there. Um, okay, so we did video, we did consumable. Um, long form content, believe it or not, and I'm talking like over 2,000 words, people love that stuff. And with long form content, 
comes long form um, uh, blog post titles. Okay. Believe it or not, long blog post titles between 10 and 15 words are more shareable on social media than a short five or six word blog post title. Don't wow. ask me why, I do not know. This, <laughs> this is uh, BuzzSumo, I think it was BuzzSumo, like a bunch of companies got together and analyzed like 900 million blog posts or something ridiculous or social media posts. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Um, we, yeah. we mail about 8,500 people on our list on a, on, on a consistent basis now, and I get people who say, this is too long, people don't read this stuff, and then other people who go, I loved every word of it, thank you. <laughs> it's not for everyone, yeah. but I'm telling you, long-form content, yeah. people love long-form content. Okay. There's so much information in it, it is so valuable. I mean, this is the stuff people bookmark and come back to. You know, yeah. it's like a favorite article, travel article that you read in a magazine, you rip that thing out and you're saving it for later. You know, mm -hmm. you read it once and then you're gonna hold on to it. Okay. Um, let's see, what else? Photos, we already talked about photos. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, every social media network be sharing photos. Okay. Um, and a tip around photos, if you're going to be taking your own photos and sharing them, choose one filter and use that filter on all of your photos so they have a, a similar look. Do you have to choose a filter? No. Okay. So not filtered is still a consist Okay. You can go filterless, but okay. you just want to, again, have like a consistent look. Feels so okay. when okay. when your photo comes up in a news feed, they're going to be like, oh, I recognize that. That's Allison. Okay. All right. That I think I could do a better job at. All right. That is good to know. All right. Same filter. So let's see. Okay. So we did consumable. We did long um, video. Oh, questions. Okay. So tell me more about which that. Which I mentioned a little bit. Um, Remember one of the, what I said at the beginning of this interview is people love to talk about themselves. Right. So you pose a question um, and people are like, yes, I get to share, I get to share. They get excited about sharing. Now, this is not going to be true for every industry out there. Um, it, it, it's not going to be true for every audience out there. Um, but generally speaking, I, people love to share, they want to participate. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're a brand that they really um, love interacting with and engaging with, they're gonna want, they're gonna answer your question. Okay. Is there, so um, is there a blend of how to use those or is it like you should rotate um, a consumable, then a video, then you know one long form? I mean, is there, it's, it's good to mix it up, right? Rotate through it and, and you know what? And see what, um, what people engage with. Maybe they don't like the consumables. Maybe they're all about the long form articles. Okay. All right. These are the people who read The Economist, not People Magazine. <laughs> you know, so they want super, super long form. Um, mm -hmm. Again, experiment, experiment, experiment. But yeah, absolutely rotate through these different kinds of. Um, uh, of content. So like one of our clients is a property management company in West Virginia. And we use two kinds of content on his Facebook page. Okay. A meme and a really crazy article um, about something housing related. Okay. People love both of them. So his consistency is he's using a meme and making it yep. fun every single time he posts it and then a crazy, like off the charts, interesting fact. Yeah, like there, uh, one article that we posted is about haunted furniture. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fun. <laughs> so yeah, fun, weird, yeah. And this is what his, and if you met, um, Patrick in person, he is freaking hilarious. So it is completely on brand for who he is. And those are the people that he hires. Okay. So it's it's completely on brand okay. for, for cool. this company. Yep. Very cool. Um, I did have one more question. I just want to make sure I haven't already asked it. So um, do you have any formatting or tone tips to help people who are writing posts to feel uh, more native to the platform that they're using? Did that question make okay. sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. So, so in terms of formatting, mm -hmm. um, there's a general rule that we follow, and this is this is very different. We're talking about marketing now. Remember, we're not talking about journalism. Right. Okay? Um, so, 
So when you're writing an article um, for marketing purposes, there are a couple of things you want to pay attention to. One is a uh, uh, very generous use of subheads. People skim articles. If they like what they see, they might go back and read the whole thing, but they might just be looking for um, one tip they've never heard before. And maybe, maybe they, you, you've got 10 tips um, and three of them, they're like, ooh, ooh, that's a new one. But then the other seven they've heard of. So definitely use subheads. Okay, okay. it makes it just a lot more reader friendly. Um, keep sentences short. It is actually much harder to do to then. use fewer words. <laughs> um, yes. But again, it's more reader friendly. And keep paragraphs short. So I like to keep paragraphs to two to three sentences. So what we're looking for here is skimmability, right? That's subheads. And then a lot of white because where do we consume content? We can do it on our mobile phones, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have a, a, a lot of um, you don't have a lot of room right. <laughs> on a mobile phone. So when you're reading a blog post, um, the more white space, the less dense it looks, the more reader friendly it looks, the more likely people are gonna read your stuff. Okay. Those are all really good tips. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Um, in sort of kind of a wrap up mode, I want to make sure that people understand that you're an amazing resource. Your website has great marketing resources on it. And yep. so you have a series of ebooks and checklists. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Is there any, um, so what types of things can people learn by going over to your website? And then I'm going to ask you to also share what your website is so that they can capture that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a uh, small business guide to blogging, a uh, small business guide to social media marketing. There is a uh, newsletter checklist, uh, top 10 tips for web copy. I know I'm leaving some other stuff out, um, but definitely the, our blogging and social media marketing eBooks are the ones that are the most popular. People download them all the time. Um, and, and if you do download it, guess what? You're going to get dumped into an automated email um, lead gen campaign, and you're going to see the plain text emails come through and what it looks like, um, you know, to, to, to use plain text for, for lead gen. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so my company name is Janssen Communications, and the website is Janssen, J-A-N-S-E-N, com, C-O-M-M, Dot com. Fantastic. And then my favorite question to ask everyone because there's, you know, people that we follow in our, you know, industry best. So who are the top influencers or influencer that you follow and that you'd recommend to others um, to get advice yeah. on social media? Uh, my, my favorite, favorite, favorite. Uh, oh, wait, I've got two favorites. Um, one is a man named Mark Schaefer. He is, uh, he lives in New Jersey. Is, He's still a professor at Rutgers, but he's also a marketing consultant to like big companies. Um, he he writes, um, well, not quite daily. He might write twice a week or so, but he's got contributors. His um, blog is called Grow. But if you look up Mark Schaefer, it's S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R. Um, you'll, you'll find him um, online. Subscribe to his blog. It's fantastic. Um, I also... Um, Absolutely love Scott Galloway. He is, I don't know why both of these are men and both of them are professors. Um, he's a professor at NYU Stern School of Business. He's a serial entrepreneur. Um, and yeah, if you look up Scott Galloway, um, you'll find him. Um, he writes once a week. Um, he's hilarious. He's self-deprecating. He's extremely smart. And he doesn't just write about doesn't really write about marketing so much. He writes about business and life. Fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing your gurus that you like to follow. You're welcome. You're welcome. This wraps up kind of where I was heading with this particular interview. Is there anything I didn't think to ask you that you'd like to add? Mm -mm. No. I think we covered a lot of territory. <laughs> Outstanding. So. Monica, thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon. I appreciate you so much. And um, just for our listeners, you can reach Monica at monicajensencom.com uh, via email or jensencom.com on her website. Thank you yep. so much, Monica. Thanks, Allison. Thanks.